maximum points uh, total of 10. The second compulsory is the disappearing ball shot. Maximum points for that one is 5, giving us a total of 15. And those shots uh, to be played within two minutes. And incidentally, the judging uh, to be judged on technical merit, the success of the shot, and also the presentation. Now, each of the players will then perform two freestyle shots. Points available for this, or between 1 and 10 for each shot giving us a total of 20. These to be played within three minutes. So if you add up the totals from the compulsories and the freestyles, 15 plus 20, giving you a maximum total of 35. Now, after all seven players have gone, the top three from each group will proceed to the final. So that gives us uh, a final six players, and each of those performs three freestyle shots. And 10 points here are the maximum available for each shot. So that's a total of 30. And we should point out, too, that the previous scores from the earlier rounds are discounted. So basically, uh, everyone starts with an equal chance once we get down to the final six. And the judges, by the way, very famous personalities, will be meeting them in a moment as well. In the event of ties, you see down the bottom there, in the first round, if there's a tie, an extra machine gun shot uh, will be played with extra reds added. And if there's a tie in the final, then there'll be an extra freestyle trick shot of the player's choice. Following all this, jolly good. Now we can show you who's in the two teams of the two groups. Starting off with Team A. And Team A is headed by the former world champion in 1985, Dennis Taylor. It includes Doug Mountjoy from Wales, Eddie Charlton, who you may have seen beaten in this afternoon's World Seniors Championship, Eddie from Australia, of course, Murdo McLeod from Scotland, John Spencer, a former world champion, as, of course, is Alex Higgins on two occasions, and it's uh, finished by Michael Ferreira, who's the 52-year-old solicitor from Bombay. Now, Team B is headed by another former world champion in 79, Terry Griffiths. It also includes Silvino Francisco from South Africa. The ever-popular John Verger, now becoming a TV personality in his own right, is in Team B. Cliff Wilson, the new World Seniors Champion. Colin Roscoe, Rex Williams and Mike Massey. So that's Team B then. So we're looking for some uh, real entertainment here. The players are ready. We'll hand you over to a very familiar face in the arena, your MC, Jeremy Beadle. Hi and welcome to the first ever World Trick Shot Championship. We've got some of the finest players from around the world. Indeed, we've got eight former world champions playing tonight. And they're great characters. They're characters of both billiards and snooker. And they're going to show us some of those amazing tricks that they do. But this is the first time that they've ever been in competition. And because it's the first time they're in competition, we do need a referee. And we've got one of the most distinguished referees. Ladies and gentlemen, from Wales, John Williams. The players will be playing for a total of £10,000 prize money with £3,000 going to the winner so that there is a lot at stake. They've been divided into two groups, seven apiece. Each player will be asked to play two compulsory shots and then two freestyle shots where a lot of the action will really start. And those freestyle shots will be judged by our panel of judges and I'd like to introduce them to you now. Ladies and gentlemen, the current 1991 World Professional Snooker Champion from Liverpool, John Parrott. <laughs> Sitting next to, to John is probably the king of snooker, the chairman of Matchroom, ladies and gentlemen, the remarkable Barry Hearn. <laughs> and making up this, this trio, well, what do you say other than Steve Davis? Indeed. Right, well, they are our three judges. Now, first of all, they're going to do the compulsory shots. Now, the compulsory shots were set by Steve Davis, and I'd like him, please, to explain exactly what the compulsory shots are and how the scoring will work. Steve? Right, a mixture of skill and also the ability to set the shots up properly. Firstly, the machine gun shot using seven reds. The white ball is hit first towards a bulk pocket then the seven reds are supposed to be hit into that same pocket and each one of those reds that goes in is worth one point and if at the end of that the white also goes in to complete the machine gun shot that's a bonus of three points and that makes a total possible of ten points. A difficult shot? Very hard, possibly the, the hardest trick shot to do uh, properly requires a tremendous amount of skill and also 
only having one go at it is very, very difficult. Well, they do, of course, get a practice run. That's uh, right. What's the second shot, Steve? The second shot's called the disappearing shot. Uh, that, that involves three balls, only three balls on the table, two balls by the pink spot, lined up in, in line with the pocket, and a white ball in the D. And the idea is to try and make all three balls go in the pocket. One point for one ball in, two points for two balls in, and if you get the third ball in, a bonus of three as well, that makes a total possible of five. So every player has the possibility of getting a total of 15 for their compulsories. Very, very clear indeed. OK, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's meet our first competitor. Ladies and gentlemen, from Belfast, one of the nicest men in the business, the 1985 World Snooker Champion, Dennis Taylor. Woo. Good luck, Dennis. Four miles from Belfast, Jeremy, by the way. Excuse me. Well, as Steve said, very well explained, by the way. Couldn't have explained it better myself. Machine gun shot. As Steve said, this is probably the hardest trick shot in the game. And it's going to be even more difficult to do in front of a uh, distinguished panel here. Steve Davis is probably uh, <clears throat> the greatest player at this shop. He has done it with 15 reds. That deserves a round of applause. In the <laughs> but he didn't use the white. <laughs> <laughs> Right, the pressure's on. One try. Took me three weeks to get this one night. <laughs> <laughs> but he said I wasn't allowed to tell Irish jokes. So I'm not going to tell you about Flanagan who rang the hospital up. His wife was in having a baby. He says, could you tell me how Mrs. Flanagan is? And they put him through to the maternity ward. The matron said, she's fine and comfortable and the baby's due in one hour's time. <laughs> And then the matron said, is this her first child? And Flanagan said, no, this is her husband speaking. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we've got to hit the white first. We'll give you an idea. Hit the white first. Before the white gets there, we've got to get all seven reds in. Now, some of the players do it with colours along the balk line, so you see a vari variation of it. Are you having a practice then, or a straight in? We're not allowed to practice, are we? Just the speed of the white. No, just the speed of the yeah. white. Now we're going to the disappearing shot. Is that the practice? <laughs> no. The legs have gone. <laughs> <laughs> never been so nervous. <laughs> I knew I should have brought the bicycle clips. <laughs> <laughs> well, as Steve said, the idea is to pop the three balls in the two corner pockets. The black and the white should go in the right corner, the red and the left. <laughs> Please go in. <laughs> I'm so unlucky tonight, you know. I'm so unlucky I bought a suit last week with two pair of trousers and burned a hole in the jacket. <laughs> Right, here we go. Dendy! Yeah. 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 So Dennis Taylor successfully completed okay. that uh, second shot. As so Dennis goes off, let's ask disappear. John Williams the score, please. Five on the machine gun shot, and a perfect disappearing shot, five more points, total ten. Total ten, Dennis Taylor. Now, ladies and gentlemen, number two, and this is where we actually ask our competitors to keep the pace going. It's the twice world finalist uh, from Pontypool, Doug Mountjoy. I use the colours. All right. Gotta be quiet, John. Huh? Just <laughs> quiet. Just quiet. Back, please. 
Now, Mike, what is it that makes this shot particularly difficult? The difficult part Thank about this, believe it or not, is knocking the white into the corner pocket at the right speed. <laughs> uh, playing across the nap at the bore end, they can afford to aim the white to hit the to hit the uh, bottom knuckle. So, he's just got to make sure that he gets the white in at the right speed. Well, like Dennis, I haven't missed this for three weeks. And have one practice <laughs> shot first with the white to get the speed across the nap. And uh, better then when the, when the real thing happens, he's really got to keep his concentration going to knock in the, the object picture. balls. Yes, once. Well, we've seen how difficult this shot is already with uh, <laughs> Dennis Taylor. That was a full start from Doug, I think. Nice bit of fun there, but that's his practice oh. shot. <laughs> Dennis has, of course, scored five out of a possible ten for this particular shot. I know that he was fast. How can Doug get on? <laughs> well, that was a disaster, Mark. Yeah. <coughs> this, must, this must be the hardest shot of the lot, as Steve Davis said. Look, he got the white wrong, got the first word wrong, and then everything goes wrong. <laughs> it's still a long way to go, Doug. No, <laughs> very <funny. laughs> It's a slow motion on how not to do the machine gun shot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it turned up, actually. <laughs> well, actually, I think he actually got two in there. That, uh, it but uh, easy when they we'll have to wait for John Williams to tell us officially. As Doug sets Doug the balls up for the disappearing <laughs> shot. <laughs> going to punch you in a minute. <laughs> Is this an easier? This is an easier shot, Mark. Then yes. Question of setting it up right. Um, we've got us, it's not a perfect plant into the left this corner is no pocket. Problem at all. The second <laughs> red actually hits the uh, side cushion rail, <laughs> just a fraction. But when they play the half ball enough, that uh, adjusts the angle, and he could get all three in, as you saw, Dennis Taylor. Not easy. Yes. Oh, well, two in. <laughs> Now let's see what uh, referee John Williams is going to award for that. OK, John, for Doug Mountjoy, please. Machine gun shot one, just feeding shot two. <laughs> Total of three points. Three. Three, OK, that's three to Doug Mountjoy. Now 23 times Australian champion from Kangaroo Point, ladies and gentlemen, Eddie Charlton. So, Eddie Charlton, the man who we saw beaten this afternoon in the final of the World Seniors Championship. And it would be a nice consolation if Eddie could uh, win this tournament. These are standard, are they? Dennis Taylor, first on, you know, got a pretty good score there. <laughs> getting the disappearing shot, uh, Trevor, and uh, getting five out of the machine gun shot. But I think that Eddie Charlton may well do better with the machine gun shot. And that's a contradiction, <laughs> steady Eddie doing that. But he's well practiced at this one. This is a family shot. And these would be shots, Mark, they practice purely for exhibitions. They wouldn't use them as part of their training routine at all. No, no. No, purely exhibition shots. Now, steady Eddie is about to put his skates on. We saw from Doug Mountjoy how easy it is to miscue on the first one, and once you do that, you put yourself completely out of sync for the whole of the trick. Just to reiterate for me, the players are allowed a practice shot to enable them to gauge the pace. They'll need to strike the white ball into the corner pocket. As Mark's already said, that's probably the hardest part, to judge that correctly. <laughs> Looks like Eddie's uh, got a bit of a problem with the wiring, but he sorted that out. <laughs> now, I fancy Eddie to score quite well at this. 
Well, you've been doing pretty well so far, Mark, and if he hits the whites at that pace, that'd probably be quite useful. Giving himself the maximum possible time to pop the rest of the balls into the same pocket before the white goes in. Well, pretty good. That's two. That's three. Four. <laughs> Shot from the overhead camera. Four balls, in fact, ending up in the pocket. We'll have to wait for John Williams to score that. Suggested that it's probably a good job that Eddie wasn't mic'd up after playing that shot. So now Eddie has to reset the balls for the disappearing shot. And as we've seen, this is uh, no certainty either. No, but Eddie, of course, has an advantage over some of the players because he's a billiard player and should uh, be able to get at least the initial in off, which guarantees him one shot. And if it's one point, and if he's got it set up right, he could well earn maximum out of this. Super shot. Sounds like nine points. Let's wait for the adjudication. Can I um, just ask you to return that, please, Eddie? Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. <laughs> the replay there of Eddie Charles from the shot. It's a nice problem. And that guarantees him a perfect score for that particular uh, can we trick. Ask John, uh, for Eddie Chalk, please, what was the score? Eddie's machine gun shot uh, gave him four points and a perfect disappearing shot, another five, total nine. Nine points for Eddie Chalk. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, quite a professional <laughs> Scottish snooker champion from Edinburgh, Murdo McLeod. Murdo McLeod from Scotland, an ex baker. This is a big trial for him. Most of the other players had had plenty of experience of the big time and exhibition play. Murdo, not quite so much. So far, Mark, your no problem. forecast that Dennis Taylor's 10-point total <laughs> will take some beating is proving quite is correct. In fact, just another four players to go, yes, including Murdo. So, as far as Dennis is concerned, with the top three from this group qualifying, <laughs> only two players need to score below 10 and Dennis will be guaranteed his place in the Even final six. The <coughs> I promise we won't look. <laughs> right, <laughs> got, just got to do that again. Knock in. Seven reds. <laughs> and get himself in front. Interesting, he's, at, he's actually got the cue right on the cushion, Mark. <laughs> yes, it's, he gets an extra yard, or two-foot start, you see, on the reds. <laughs> no. <laughs> didn't get very far, did he? <laughs> he actually made a, a good enough contact with the that first one. That was worth coming down from Edinburgh, of course. But, uh, <laughs> it missed the pocket. Here we see it. Gives it a belt. <laughs> But off the jaws, and after that, he was always struggling. The only fellow now, something about this, you know, <laughs> if they miss one ball, it breaks the concentration, and they miss most of the ensuing balls, you know. Especially when that happens, and the missed ball comes back and disturbs the rest of them. It's very unfortunate for Murdo. <laughs> That'll be all the air got out of my tyres when they got out of here. <laughs> Just to remind you, these are the compulsory shots. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty decent crowd in this evening, enjoying this. John Parrott there, the reigning world champion, one of tonight's judges. So here goes Murdo with the disappearing shot. <laughs> I don't think Murdo will be uh, troubling us okay, for the final. John, well, I think it looks like Murdo goodbye Murdo, Murdo but uh, hard luck. With the machine gun shot, with Pike. <laughs> <laughs> and one and the disappearing shot. A total of two. Well remembered. Okay. <laughs> well remembered. <laughs> Good job we got an electronic scoreboard. Now, ladies and gentlemen, a three times world champion from Ratcliffe, John Spencer. John Spencer then, one of the greats in the 70s. 
70s. It's a difficult one for me to play. And he's done this a few times. Try this with two whites and four But not quite as sharp as he used to be, John. <laughs> probably played this shot more than any of the others. He had uh, a touch of eye trouble some while ago, uh, Mark, did he not? Yeah, still uh, taking medication for it as well. That's uh, severely uh, hampered John's uh, playing. Just the white. Just the white. Never complains, though. That's pretty good. <laughs> Just a little bit quick, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's whether to play the white near the reds and thus go straight into the reds or take the extra foot near the cushion. <laughs> well, he'll get one, I think. No, I actually, I'm beginning to wonder if this isn't you being framed. But, uh... I think you you'd probably be better off, you know, um, going down there and uh, saying, I'm not bothering about the seven, who, who I'm going to get in the white and four. The, the players are just testing the speed of the table. Speed kills. Uh, <laughs> yes, and of course, the players going later on in the group have a definite advantage, Mark, because they then know exactly how many they're likely to need to go through, and they can play the percentage game. Well, important, John gets this, and he oh, yeah. has done, and that just might sneak him in. We'll have to wait and see. Okay, John Williams, please. I think he's going to land at third. Perfect disputing shots. Five points, total six. Six points. Now, ladies and gentlemen, from Belfast, twice world professional snooker champion, the amazing Hurricane Higgins. And we all know this gentleman, don't we? Never seen him in the hat before. I'm not nervous, I just have to trick shots. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you should be pitching for the Red Sox for that on Mark. By heavens, you needed that. <laughs> now, he's done this a few times as well. I think, true to say, Alex Higgins, one of the great entertainers that Snooker's ever produced in match play. And the game of Snooker, despite all the controversy that surrounds Alex Higgins, has a great deal to thank this gentleman for. Really brought snooker to the forefront <coughs> of popularity in the late 70s and early 80s. World champion twice, 72 and 82. And did say to me recently, his aim was to win the world championship again and therefore win it in three decades. successfully complete the disappearing shot to take the lead from Dennis Taylor. Fantastic test of Just missed one there, didn't he? Missed the second one, and in fact nudged some of the reds away, but still, look at that. Tremendous stuff from Alex. <coughs> Just watch here, the cue nudges some of the other reds, and that's a terrific recovery. <coughs> If he hadn't have uh, knocked the red away, he'd have done the lot. So Alex, if he gets this, <coughs> will definitely win a place in the final. Dennis Taylor currently leading with ten. Alex would beat that, and with just two more to uh, one more to go in the group, and that's going to be good enough. The ultimate crowd pleaser. Great stuff from Alex. Six with the machine gun shot, five with a disappearing shot, total 11. 11 so he goes in front. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Burton Bay, so the we now know amateur billiard champion Michael Ferreira. As Michael Ferreira is introduced, that Higgins and Taylor are definitely through, and Eddie Charlton is sweating on what Michael Ferreira does. He needs at least nine to force a tie and if he gets more than nine he will join Taylor and Higgins as the three representatives of group A in the final. 
But I have one more, and that is trying to make you good people understand my Peter Sellers accent. <laughs> <laughs> this man uh, has held center stage in Talk, India at billiards for two years decades. Ago, Alex Higgins came to Bombay. A solicitor by an profession. Tour, which ended pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and I took him out to lunch with my wife and six-year-old son. And Alex was going 19 to the dozen. And after listening to him for about three minutes, my son, whose jaw dropped open like that, turned around to me and said, Daddy, is this foreigner speaking English? <laughs> <coughs> so do you fancy <coughs> Mr. Ferreira to make it to the right. final mark? Now let's see if we can set do... the ball slightly differently. He's Curving them out so he doesn't have to lean over so far. Well, most of all for the old Can you see that? Not in a straight line. He <laughs> doesn't have to put him in a straight line, of course. I think he'll do well at this, Pereira. I'll just try this once. Mm -hmm. That's the last thing you want to do. Get the white going off course and blocking the path of the reds. Right, here we go. This could be interesting, Mark, because I think it'd be interesting to see how John scores this as we watch this again. Let's just count these. Ones. Two. first-class recovery there. Well done. Yeah. Three, four. Um, Eddie Charlton and myself come from the colony. Just got the fifth in with the white. So he helped me out with his billiard balls. <laughs> I didn't we've got him, but... We've got to stick together. <laughs> <laughs> Now, with this disappearing shot to come, uh, Mike Ferreira, being a billiard player, he should be able to make this and get maximum points. So, if he gets five points off this, I think uh, he's a certainty to uh, make the I final. This will be a case of Britannia waving the rules. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Two points off. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> oh. well, that's a little interesting now. John Williams, please. Machine gun shot five, disappearing shot two. A total of seven. Seven points for Michael Ferreira. Now, let's look at the scores. So, the scores well, from Team A, and yeah, we can see that can the see winner that of Team A is Alex Higgins place. with 11 Alex. points. In second, second place, place, Dennis Taylor, Taylor with 10. In and in third place, Eddie, Eddie Charlton, Charlton with 9. So that means so that Michael Ferreira, John Spencer, Doug Mountjoy and Murdo McLeod are eliminated from this group. And it's Higgins, Taylor and Charlton who will go forward into the last six. And they will join three players from Team B. Team B also comprising seven men. And we'll be back to see how they do after this break. Well, in the heat of the moment there, I got slightly confused and did those bottom four players an injustice. They're not, of course, eliminated because they all have their two freestyle shots to play. But Higgins, Taylor and Charlton in pole position. Let's go back to Jeremy Beadle. Welcome back to the World Trick Shot Championship. Now, we've had the compulsories. Now, we go into the freestyle. And this is very exciting. But to understand the scoring and exactly what we're going to do, let's go over to Barry Hearn. Barry, can you explain, please? Well, Jeremy, at this stage, as you say, this should be really exciting. Each player gets a chance to show exactly what he's made of. Each player will play two shots, and our job on the panel is to score those two shots with a maximum of 20 points available. What we've got to take into account is the technical merit of the shot, the success rate, in other words, do they actually make what they're trying to, and most important of all, I think, in my opinion anyway, is the presentation of that shot, because trick shot's all about entertainment, and that's what these boys are here to do. 
Thank you very much indeed. Indeed, they are entertaining us, and who better than to bring back one of the great entertainers. Ladies and gentlemen, Dennis Taylor. This is freestyle, is it? Uh, Choose your own show. Yes, but we've only got three days to do it in. <laughs> well, I just wondered if I was allowed to wear my wellies. You know, with... <laughs> Have you got the four cues, John, I could borrow you? <coughs> this one here is all about cue action and timing. I suppose it's a little bit like the machine gun shot, only it's uh, another it's variation. Uh, We've got cushion. four cues here. Where would you get these from, Woolworths? Yeah. <laughs> As I say, it's all about cue action and timing. <laughs> so, it's the balls round the cushions. And they've got to miss each other as they take their route. Something like eight balls there well, I'm just getting off it ready. the side. The ball cushion, the right-hand side. What about Paddy talking to Mick? And Mick says, Paddy, I can't sell the car. Paddy says, how many miles is on it? Mick says, the 75,000. Paddy says, you want to put the clock back? Seen him three weeks later, he says, how'd you go on, Mick? Did you sell that car? Mick says, sell a good car like that, there's only 11,000 miles on the clock. <laughs> <laughs> This shot. And uh, this other shot, I think John's got three volunteers to help me out with this particular shot. Please. You may have seen this one on television before. Thank you. I notice they're all women, Dennis. I've done this shot with one lady before. I've never attempted it with three. So anything could happen. Have you told the young ladies where they've got to go, John? No. I could you know just, you uh, if one of you could just sit on the table, lie here with your head looking up at the ceiling, yeah? Do you, would you like to go first? <laughs> <laughs> just sit there, throw your legs over the end of the table, just lie down close. With your head, no, no, head looking up at the ceiling. Lie down flat. But lie, just flat. You know, on your backside, that's it, right. <laughs> and would you two like to lie the other way, just beside her? <laughs> <laughs> if you just sit up and crawl across with your feet here and your head over the other end. Yeah? And would you like to go next to her as well? And get in nice and close together. Can you come this way a little bit? Perfect. Nice and close like that. And if you get in closer still, yeah? Right, well, what happens here? We put all the lights out. <laughs> Have you <laughs> Where's the white? Have we got the white? <laughs> now what we do, we've got the white ball on the block of chalk, on the cushion here. Now uh, the black... Could you just bite that for me, please? <laughs> and chin up. The black's in a fairly tricky position as well. <laughs> oh! I've lost it. <laughs> <laughs> right, just by, by this. Now, the black's in a fairly tricky position as well. I've got to pop the black out of... Sorry, what was your first name again? <laughs> Look at the... <laughs> could, you, could you just come this way a little bit? <laughs> We've got to pop the black in the top box. <laughs> Now, you'll have to be very quiet, because the last time I played this, the young lady swallowed the black. <laughs> Mind, you should have seen the shot I played to get the black out again. That was <laughs> Here we go, black in the top pocket. The first time I've tried it with three young ladies on the table. Oh. <laughs> well, that was a 
Lutby. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. A round of applause for the three young girls. I that, have uh, no doubt, ladies and gentlemen, that, that the judges will be very, very generous with the entertainment oh, value. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, Dennis Taylor. Terrific presentation there. <laughs> OK, let's go to the judges now, please. Uh, John? I'll give Dennis 14. 14 points from John. Barry? 13. 31 points from Barry Hearn. <laughs> These actually being marked out of 20, of course, so he Barry couldn't give dyslexic. 31. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, of course, Steve Davis, 13 <laughs> points, which gives us a total of 40 points. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome back that marvellous player, Doug Mountjoy. <laughs> So Dennis with 40 points in that round and a total of 50 for this section. Is Doug Mountjoy? I should warn the players, of course, that we are against the clock, and so um, Dennis did lose. 28 points. So there are the updated scores. Dennis Taylor having played his freestyle shots, obviously in the lead well, with 50. Gentlemen, That's like the 40 the, um, added to the 10. The Higgins I mean, is second, but that. now Mountjoy is about to do his freestyle. <laughs> <laughs> it's a billiard shot. Using the cue ball. Hit in the black, over the red, the white goes into the pocket. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. So, well executed. Oh, probably one of the most difficult Slow motion the picture there of the white going over the red I, into I, the I, pocket. I placed the black the other side of the pocket there, and hopefully, striking the red ball, with a kiss on the black, into that pocket over there. <laughs> You're a little cheaty. Kiss the black into the corner pocket. <laughs> Absolutely marvellous. There we are. Well, it is a trick shot, and there's definitely a trick there. So, John, please. John Parrott. I'll give him ten for being cheeky. Ten for cheat. <laughs> Barry Hearn. Ten, I'm not quite sure why. <laughs> Steve Davis. I like these colours. <laughs> <laughs> ten, ten and thirteen, giving a total of thirty-three oh points. A wonderful display of gags there. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome back Eddie Charlton. So, Doug Mountjoy's total goes up to 36, putting him in second place, but it may not be enough. We'll have to wait and see. Now we go back to Eddie Charlton. Now, Eddie, uh, Eddie Charlton, Mark, is known as one of the great uh, characters of the game in his own way. And it looks like he's taking some time over this one. He's got his case out. I should think those balls hanging over the lips of the pocket are intended to enter the pockets, all in one stroke, I would imagine. You don't see. miss much, do you, Mark? Yes, I can imagine. I'm just working this one out. Right. <laughs> of course, there's, there's three very important things about trick shots. One, you have to set them up correctly. The second important thing is to hit the wide ball in the right place with the tip of your cue. Yeah, I'll screw it back off the blue. And the third important thing is to play the shot at the right speed. And if you put all those three things together, you should get the shot. <laughs> so there are six balls by pockets, Mark. Is he going to try and put all of them, do you think, here? Yeah, if it works, the lot. <laughs> blue onto the yellow, into the, knocking the red in the green pocket, the blue going through to the red right, well on the, the yellow pocket, screwing back off the blue to this one in the left corner, and the white and the red 
in the middle pocket. And it's all of course, going to dropping in fairly quickly. So what you have to look for, I'm going to play onto the blue to make the red into the centre pocket. Blue to carry on to make the second red. Yellow to cross the table to make the third red. And finally, draw the white ball back to make the fourth and last red. So by the time all the balls come to rest, the four reds should be missing. Here we go. Very, very good indeed. We'll get high points for that. That was a difficult shot. Worth waiting for. Second shot? Yes, please. Yes, please. Yeah. As Eddie said earlier, if you set the mat right, and uh, you should get it. Lovely. Six reds here. Now, does that mean, Mark, when you say if you set them up right, that basically anyone who can hold a cue and, and strike a ball could make yeah, that shot right, if they were yeah. correctly set? You've still got to strike the white ball correctly. Now, he had to screw that back just now, and he couldn't afford to put side on it, or else he wouldn't have come back to knock the ball in the near corner. Here's another very difficult one. Let Eddie explain it. Can I have that red, please, John? Eddie, don't forget, was in third place after the compulsories with nine. So a good score for this, and he'll be in a good position to go through to the last six. See how much time he takes, making sure those balls are in exactly the right now position. Now this time I've cut the path to the centre pocket off with three pairs of red balls. The blue's caught against the other two reds in the centre of the table. I have to play from this position and get the blue away from this little cluster of balls and into the opposite centre pocket. Here we go. Good oh, oh. Well, he deserved that. Well so near and such a difficult shot as well. He got okay, the reds away, but just uh, set it just slightly wrong, there. and it caught Eddie the bump. Jump. We go to John Parrott, please. Um. 13 points from John Parrott, from Barry Hearn. 14 points from Barry Hearn, and from Steve Davis. I've still got that super glue on my hand. <laughs> 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 Giving a total for Eddie Charlton of 40 points. Now we welcome back one of the nicest Scotsmen it's possible to meet, ladies and gentlemen, Murdo MacLeod. What do you need? Blue, blue, no, three lines. Hmm? Blue. Sorry. Right. So Eddie Charlton with 40 points, giving him a total of 49, and displacing Doug Mountjoy in second position, and just a point agonizingly for Eddie behind Dennis Taylor who still leads with 50 but don't forget still four men to go with their freestyle shots Alex Higgins in a good position after the compulsories uh, Michael Ferreira still has a chance as does John Spencer and even Murdo well, McLeod if he was to produce two good shots here could put himself into the reckoning Just potting the blue in the middle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Knocking the reds out of the way, blue and going in off the red set by the middle pocket. Played it a little bit quick. Just drops it. So he'll be pleased with that, and that will give him confidence for the second. Money of the two freestyle shots. <laughs> 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 they are expecting a bit of presentation from Murdo. Really big it, and that. That's very shame. This looks like a complex one, Mark. Very ambitious, this one. If 
If he gets this, he'll chalk up a, a high mark. Uh, I think it's uh, Reds going into uh, the four bottom pockets. I'm going to try and put the pink in this corner pocket. Oh, I thought I was right. It's the pink in the corner. What a bet. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. Well, Cheek a little smile from Murdoch McLeod. John Parrott, please. <coughs> 12 points from John Parrott, from Barry Hearn. 11 from Barry Hearn. <laughs> and 14 points from Steve Davis, giving a total of 37 points. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome back John Spencer. Take them all off for now. Pardon? I don't need any balls for this shot. Okay. This well, Murdo McLeod, <laughs> with that 37 points, well, has given himself a very outside a chance here. You want to find out if it's level. Murdo now going up to third, what overtaking Doug Mountjoy, who won't be joining us for the final. Well, the uh, the currently, Alex Higgins and Michael Ferreira still to go. <laughs> and here's John Spencer. <laughs> It's not <laughs> having a bit of fun of games with a beer glass. Oh. Are we allowed to practice? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's what should have happened. <laughs> That's what's known as sinking a pint. Have you seen this one before, Mark? No. This one's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> what we're going to try and do is sit the brown, draw the black in the corner pocket and send the red into the right-hand corner pocket. See what he tried to do, but he didn't succeed. That was extremely close. He only gets, he only gets uh, one chance at that. Trying to draw the black, not the yellow onto the red, and pot a red into the opposite four pocket. Don't get too ready for that. one's small enough. Seven from John Parrott. Barry Hearn gives five, and Steve gives seven, giving a total of 12 points to John Spencer. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome back the leader after the compulsory section, Alex Higgins. Well, I'm not sure if that was actually uh, seven points. I think it maybe should have been 12, but I don't think it's going to matter. Uh, John Spencer there with 25. That's right, 25 points in total. So John, I'm afraid, won't be making it to the final. We know that uh, Dennis Taylor, Eddie Charlton and Murdo are in pole position at the moment, but it could all change here. The people's champion, as they call him, is back in the arena, Alex Higgins, complete with baseball cap. The leader, in fact, after the first round with 11 points. And I think, Mark, this should be quite entertaining. Well, we don't know what they're going to do until they set the balls up. We're just now spotting tonight's deliberate mistake, ladies and gentlemen. We've lost the triangle. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to say this. Is there a triangle in the house? <laughs> yes. So, looking for the triangle. <coughs> two reds, one red. No, one. Still don't know what he's going to do. Well, he's done a pretty good job of that without a triangle. Do you want to do your second shot first? Yeah, I'm going to do no. my first shot first. <laughs> so, it's a silly idea, right? Ten balls in the triangle. Have we got a triangle? Yes, I can see what he's going to do now. <laughs> Put uh, the black and, uh, and three accompanying balls on this side cushion and try and pot the black over the triangle, over that little line of reds at the balk end there and into the pocket. Now, the black, as you can see, Tight on the cushion behind three reds. Oh, by the matchroom. That's the ball that's going or hoping to go <laughs> over the triangle, over the reds, and into the pocket. <laughs> and over that little program as well, if you like. Oh, it's heavy, this. Spectacular shot, this one. <coughs> well, this should be easy, right? 
The idea is to get my hand without each to go into the top left hand pocket. <laughs> Black into the corner. Oh. I like it. Very near. Not quite. Oh well. Unlucky. You'll get a fair score for that though. Stay on the phone. <laughs> Alex Higgins, world professional champion in 1972 and 1982. Beat uh, Ray Reardon in that 82 final. And to get there, he beat Jimmy White, just as White was starting to come to prominence in one of the great matches the idea of, this of all time, really. It's to complete the triangle, put the red back in the stock head. Around the cushions to knock the red. Back into the triangle and the triangle down. Oh, yeah. oh. There we go. Well done, Alex. John, please. Well done, triangle Mike. is leading on the black. He sends the red round off. One, two, three cushions. John scores 14. Black, Barry scores 13. Steve Davis is lost for numbers. <laughs> 16 for Steve Davis, well done. A grand total of 43 points for Alex Higgins. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our last contender in Group A, Michael Pereira. Ladies and gentlemen, they say that snooker is a game of infinite variety. And when you see this shot, you'll realize that they're not kidding. You've just potted a so red. So Alex Higgins with a combined total now of 54, and that means he is definitely through to the last six, as is Dennis Taylor. And what Michael Ferreira has to do now is try and either equal or catch Eddie Charlton. Eddie with 49, Michael Ferreira with seven. So he needs 42 to equal Eddie, and he needs 43 to go through. And obviously the idea is to pot the black. But you're snooker. Now, any ideas? Did I hear someone say that you could pot it off the side cushion? Put it off the side cushion. All oh, right, <laughs> Steve. Oh. <laughs> well, let's see if I can pot it for you nice people. This is new for me. Oh, using the cue. <laughs> well done, now, Smith. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, it's a shame to take the money. I've had the privilege of playing John Parrott, oh, the current God. world champion, on two occasions. Rolling. Oh. <laughs> Michael, you can say what you like. It's money that makes it work. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Once was in Zimbabwe. Where, of course, uh, he beat me. <laughs> and the other time was a couple of weeks ago in New Delhi. And I've never forgiven him for what he did to me. The only thing we now share in common is a passion for solving crossword puzzles. <laughs> and this is a shot that John left me when he beat me 5 nothing in New Delhi. <laughs> <laughs> you can forget about these reds. There's that last red hanging over the pocket, and I'm snookered behind the black. <coughs> now, here we go, trying to pot it off five cushions. The red over the green pocket. Two, three, four, five. No. Oh. Oh. Very near, but not quite. Good attempt. Well done, and for the last time in Group A, let's go back and see the scores. John scores 12. <coughs> Barry scores 13. And Steve scores 16, giving Michael a score of 41 points. <laughs> that was the last player in Group A. So now, let's look at the scores. 
And so the scores was now show very unfortunate for Michael good. Ferreira, very unfortunate for him because he's just a point away, but unfortunately he's eliminated. And Alex Higgins with 54, Dennis Taylor with 50, and Eddie Charlton with 49 will be the three players who go through to the final. Three players, too, will be going through from Group B. And to see who they are, join us after this break. Well, welcome back. So we know that Higgins, Taylor and Charlton are through from Group A. Who's going to go through from Group B? There you see the lineup: Terry Griffiths, Silvino Francisco, John Virgo, always popular man, Cliff Wilson, today's winner earlier in the World Seniors, Colin Roscoe, Rex Williams and Mike Massey, the American, who most people are tipping to win this title. First of all, it's the compulsory shots. Let's go back to our MC on the floor, Jeremy Beadle. <laughs> Welcome back to the World Trick Shot Championships. We already now know that we've got three players going through to the finals. That's Alex Higgins, Dennis Taylor and Eddie Charlton. We now go through to Group B, who are going to play their compulsory shots. Because of time restrictions, we have asked our Group B players on the compulsories if they can go through them as fast as possible. So there may not be quite as many funny lines. But ladies and gentlemen, you're going to see some marvellous snooker as I welcome the first player who won the world title at his very first attempt from Slanethley, Terry Griffiths. So we're back to the machine gun, Mark, and this always makes for good entertainment. Much easier if you said a lot for me. Anybody, uh, Evening, <laughs> judges. <laughs> Balls in. Okay. They're telling me to rush, I can't believe it. <laughs> You can blank people like Jeremy, I don't mind, you know. <laughs> Until then. So this now the it. disappearing ball oh. shot. Terry just making sure those balls are properly lined up. And we saw some good examples of this in team A, didn't we, Mark? Just beating shots, another five points, total ten. Ten points to Terry Griffiths, a brilliant display. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the 1985 <laughs> British Open champion from South Africa, Silvano Francisco. <laughs> so, so Silvino Francisco from South Africa. Former British Open winner, I believe, Mark, as well, Sylvina. That's right, a few uh, years back. That was his only major ranking, but... Uh... So, ten points there for Terry Griffiths from that uh, first two compulsories, and that's the target. Got the white, didn't you? Two. 
Who's going to be the first player to knock all seven object balls in and the white and get ten? Very near, very near. Two missing, though. <clears throat> Went wrong about here. Looked as though he had a chance to knock the lot in, but went wrong on the third ball. <laughs> so now the disappearing shot in off the red into the left-hand pocket, as you see it. The black going in because it's a plant, or almost a plant, and the red disappearing into the right corner pocket. They're doing this well. Full marks for that. I think that's about... Ten points. Ten for Griffiths. Ten for Francisco. Uh, 80, uh, sorry, the 1979 UK professional champion and the popular co-host of TV's Big Break, John Burgo. We're not allowed to say anything which helps me because I'm a member of the DNA, the National Association of Dyslexics. So, uh, seconds and there's no So it's not the end of the world, really, for JV, as he's commonly known. Not many are scoring more than five off the machine gun shot, but a lot of them are getting 100% success <laughs> at this one. So the pressure's on JV to get all three balls in the pocket. Just being shot one, total of three. Total of three to John Berger. Not so good. One of the most popular players in Great Britain, a real personality. The World Seniors Champion for 1991. Please welcome Cliff Wilson. <laughs> I was going to tell some jokes, but I, I checked up at Mary White House and listened, so that's not going to happen. Machine gun shot, is it? Yes, please. <laughs> Me and Terry Griffiths were in Carrickburg six years ago, done an exhibition. Come to the end of the night, Terry said, I'm going to finish now with a machine gun shot. When we look round, everybody gone. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the blue? Is that the blue? No. <laughs> I've been enjoying myself. <laughs> Gonna make a mess of this pigging thing. <laughs> 57, never got it in my life. 
What's what you gonna say? I am bought a ball in there all day, bollocks like that. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, can I bully you that? What are you laughing? Yeah, you come and play the piggy thing. <laughs> I get a paid for it though, wouldn't I? <laughs> Say three. We have to. Three. No, no, one. <laughs> one, two, three. Got it? One, two, three. Too quick. <laughs> Try it again. Slower. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not 21 anymore. Take it tight. <laughs> I'll be 96 by the time this shot's <laughs> 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 Go on. <laughs> One, two, and a bit. <laughs> Three. I'm going to wait. <laughs> Disappearing shot. Yeah. So Cliff Wilson with the... A slightly unique version of the machine gun shot. Didn't really hit the white at all, and I don't think he meant to. It'll be interesting to see how John Williams scores that one. That's all right, then. You get him paid for being an idiot. Have you seen that program? Yes, I know. Go see if they touch it. I can't tell them. Go on. See if they touch it. <laughs> How would I know? I'm just a referee. Be <laughs> <laughs> touching you. Yeah. Thank you very much. They've, they've got to be touching these. Uh, the pin come back, or else uh, the shot won't happen. One over the three is not bad, is it? <laughs> well, it happened. It hasn't happened for Cliff. But he's enjoying himself. Hasn't scored too highly. Cliff scored nothing on the machine gun shot. <laughs> <laughs> Can Are you on Welsh? Else? You're supposed to be Welsh! <laughs> Can you explain, please? Yes, because the white was never going to reach the pocket. <laughs> so the, white so the shot is null and void. Right. So he scored one on the disappearing shot. Total <laughs> one. One. <laughs> Tough. But uh, a lot of entertainment all the same. Now, ladies and gentlemen, will you welcome from Connors Key, one of the great British players, Colin Roscoe. Yeah. So, Cliff Wilson <laughs> with an apologetic one. Bit tough, really, but uh, Cliff still has the freestyle to go, and of course, he doesn't really mind because he's the new World Seniors Champion. So, still Griffiths and Francisco leading with 10 points apiece. And now it's Colin Roscoe, Mark. Colin from Connors Key, North Wales. Has uh, been playing on television a couple of times or so over the last year, and. Uh, having a resurgence of form in his mid-40s, but this is a bit of a trial for him. No problem, is it? Remember, you've got to hit the white and try to knock in all seven reds and then follow him with the white to get maximum points, ten. Oh, oh he stops just where Terry Griffith stopped. Pretty good, though. That's as good as most of them. It's got to be the reds, Just right? like Terry, stopped on the pink. Like, yeah. A fraction too hard on the white, I suggest. Could have saved a bit on the white. So now this uh, tough little disappearing shot played on the pink spot. <laughs> the two balls have to be set correctly, just offset from a plant. It is an exact plant into the left-hand pocket. And, of course, also, um, one has to be able to play the billiard shot in off the first red. Go, go on, on, Red. Go on. Yeah. Well done, Colin. 
That'll make him very pleased. John P. Collins scored five with the machine gun shot and a perfect disappearing shot gives another five, total ten. Ten there, well done indeed. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the twice world professional billiard champion from Stourbridge, Rex Williams. So, a very, very interesting situation now. We have three men tying on ten points. Terry Griffiths, Silvino Francisco, and recently joined by Colin Roscoe. So, all very tight. Now, what can Rex Williams make of it? I've put a lot of reds on him, I've put any colours. So. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we've been told we've got to get on with this because uh, time's getting on. Now, I was going to tell you... A knock and A in my head, <laughs> but I can't do that, so I'll do that in the second half. Um, right, the famous machine gun shot. And uh, Eddie Charlton is the only man in captivity that can play this style than any man I've ever seen play it. Captivity. <laughs> <laughs> I said that quietly because he's upstairs listening. <laughs> yes, just outside the commentary so, box. Uh, Anyhow, Rex Williams, uh, twice uh, world professional billiards champion. I've had many great billiard games with this fella. Right, well, Just one red in the pocket, incredible and that was the second one. The white didn't go in, and as Mark said, that's not going to trouble John Williams too much. But Rex, being a wonderful billiards player, should do a little better with this one, Mark. Well, I was watching him practice this shot just before Pexing it all before started. <laughs> and he didn't get one of them, he must have had ten attempts. <laughs> Trick to form. <laughs> one of the best billiard players ever, Rex Williams, misses the billiard shot whilst the snooker players get it. Was it was that, that was the trial shot, wasn't that it? Was, that was, yes indeed. That wasn't for real. <laughs> It just goes to show that when people are in competition, I mean, nerves can get you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> that we have one of the most creative and versatile snooker billiard players in the world. He really is a pro's pro. From Loudoun, Tennessee, ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome the amazing Mike Massey. I've been watching him right there. You know what the problem is? No, they're using the wrong club selection. Ah. <laughs> See, in America, we play pool. So, and we 20 have points for Rex, Rex Williams. Williams. It certainly doesn't affect the top of the leaderboard. Still, Terry Griffiths, Silvino, Francisco and Colin Roscoe heading the way with 10. <laughs> and Rex Williams managing to tie Cliff Wilson with that solitary point. And just Mike Massey to come from Group B in the compulsories. Hey, up there. <laughs> You ever seen one of these? I, I have shopped in shops like that, yes. They <laughs> 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 sell, mag sell magazines for people like you. He wins a trick shot competition, he's going to buy the other one. <laughs> <laughs> First time I've seen this shot was last week, and I tell you, it's, it's, it's a neat shot. I'm going to put it in my repertoire, that's for sure. I just wish they had bigger balls. <laughs> <laughs> we got, <laughs> our balls are like twice this big, and our pockets are three times this big, so. Okay. Honey, pray for me, okay? See, I got a roll for a nap here. Okay. <sighs> <laughs> Can I have a pinch hitter? <laughs> oh. Pretty 
good for Mike Massey. You might have heard him ask for a pinch hitter before he played that shot. It's a baseball term, meaning can someone else bat in my place? But he didn't make too bad a job of it, did he? Oh, it's wrong side. Just uh, uses another ball to hammer them to make sure that they're touching. They do tend to roll. Stay. Anybody got a hammer? <laughs> <laughs> The setting of this shot absolutely vital. Oh. And playing the in-off shot will be a little bit foreign to Mike Massey. <sighs> from Tennessee. Seven. Seven for Mike Massey. And Mike was the last player in Group A to play his compulsories. So now, let's look at the scores. So, a very interesting situation and in Group B. A three-way tie between Terry Griffiths, Silvino Francisco and Colin Roscoe. Mike Massey is next with seven. John Virgo has three. And Cliff Wilson and Rex Williams both have one. But, of course, we still have the freestyle to come and 60 possible points available. So we'll come back and see which of those players can make the best of their freestyle shots and go through to the final. Join us after this break. <laughs> well, welcome back with Terry Griffith, Silvino Francisco and Colin Roscoe so far tied on 10. How are they going to do on the freestyle shots? 60 points available. Let's go back to Jeremy Beadle. Welcome back to the World Trick Shot Championships. And we've already done the compulsories in Group B. Remember, they're playing for a total prize money of £10,000. So the freestyle is really important. Let's welcome back, please, for his first freestyle demonstration, Terry Griffiths. I don't have to rush for this, do I? <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's okay, I'll get the balls. John, you stay with us. You, you, <laughs> you tell me what you want. What do you want? Colors? All the colours. <laughs> All the colours. John Parrott. Pleased to meet you. Did he play great in the World Championship? <laughs> really, Steve Davis. <laughs> what a tremendous player. <laughs> Mickey Duff. <laughs> 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 Not, <laughs> You're going to give me naught anyway, would you? So it's all right. Give me ten for your haircut. <laughs> okay, I'll play the the most difficult trick shot there is to play, really. It's never been performed before on television. <laughs> Through sheer skill and courage and a lot of front. <laughs> going to play a few shots into the basket for you. Just need a little assistance here. So let us, Jeremy, can you do this for me, please? <laughs> <laughs> Always get the shorts mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Good to see. Right. Got to have a lot of lava belt. You can hold the basket <laughs> very tightly for me, okay? <laughs> tightly. You okay? <laughs> <laughs> Don't be nervous. No. You, you weren't last night. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this shot is called the rapid fire shot. Very dangerous shot to play. <laughs> if all the shots, of course, we're going to try and jump the uh, coloured balls into the basket as quickly as possible. If I miss the basket, well, anything could happen, but we are, right? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you want to free a those as well if this doesn't work, I can tell it. Okay. Don't push it down in the front of me, Jeremy, okay? Fine. Thanks so much. Here we go. It's 
quick, quick, quick. Yeah. Wow. How's that? I told you it was impossible. And it Beautifully impossible. performed. Just the black coming out. Right, but I think that should count from the judge's point out. of view as being in. Should get high marks for that. Again, never been seen before. It's got a little bit of cloth as a protection again, against the <laughs> bedcloth of the table. Just see it there. Right then. <laughs> right, I've got to explain this shot. It's very complicated. <laughs> We place the white ball just on the side of the basket there, the front of the neck. And what happens if I hit the red ball correctly? The red ball comes in at an angle into the side of the neck, which starts to spin the basket around. The red ball then comes in behind the white ball, kisses the white ball out, and the red ball stays in the basket. For those of you who don't like a story, it's red in and white out. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff okay. from Terry Griffiths. Can you just a brilliant everybody, trick please, shot exponent. Uh, what the judges are looking for, please. Well, we're looking initially for technical merit, because obviously this is entertainment. <coughs> we want to make sure the shot is tough enough that the man on the street can't play. Most important of all, we want to look for entertainment value, the presentation of the shot. And thirdly, of course, to make sure the shot actually works. We have to take all that into account, and of course we've got up to 20 points to score with. Okay. Simple as that. John, 16 points, a very good score there. Barry? 16 points and 15 points to Steve Davis, giving Terry 32 points. Will you please welcome back Silvano Francisco. Some wrench, John, please. Wrench? Please. All of them, please. So, good performance there from Terry Griffiths. He was a joint leader with 10 after the first round. 47 to add makes him 57. And that's actually the highest score of anyone so far, beating everyone from Group A. So, I would have thought Terry must be in with a big chance of reaching the final six. Extra red. This little shot is called Ring a Ring a Rosie. Very pretty little shot is this. Black, please, John. <coughs> right, the idea here is to try and pop the black ball round the reds into the top pocket. Any better than that, can you? A lady assistant, yes. Uh, and a blonde brunette. Uh, shall I just pick it's up? It's in all the reds. Would you like to come finding its way back, back into the pocket. I only pick the pretty ones. I see. Right, well, Dana, how do you do? How do you do? <clears throat> um, you can just hang on at the bottom end of the table, please. It's all right. He pays all that bills. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your own teeth? Sorry? Is that your own teeth? Yeah. <laughs> Something different having falls tomorrow, <laughs> aren't it? Well, the look of trepidation on that lady's face. She doesn't know quite know, yet. Did Dennis use three? I can I'm only sure handle one at a time. Required to do. <laughs> I suspect he's going to be playing a ball out of the lady's mouth. Bite in the chalk. We saw Dennis do it uh, with uh, three yeah. ladies on the table. Glad you are, 
<laughs> um, could you lie on the table? What's the name? Uh, Claudine. Claudine. Yeah. Right, Claudine, if you can lie on the table. Feet over there, head over here, please. All right. Looks pretty good from here. What do you think? <laughs> I think John. Yeah, Tony Knowles does this one, but it takes an hour and a half. I just want you to bite, not swallow. <laughs> okay. No, that's fine. If you could move over a bit, line, straight line. Oh, not too far. Then come back a bit. Cheers. Right, that's lovely. <clears throat> now the lady's got her eyes closed. She's praying. Can you move up towards me, please? Whoa, that's fine. <coughs> now, if you can tilt back. No, tilt back. Cheers. That's too far. Yeah. You're lying on a straight line. That's it. Flip it up. All right, cheers. <coughs> Could you guys all breathe in that side of the table, please? <laughs> Help the black to go down. I've never hit a move in black. <laughs> Alex around? <laughs> if you can talk back, please. Whoa, that's it. You can close your eyes. Wake up in the morning. Clean the cue balls. Is that camera insured? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Great stop. You can imagine the pressure out there for that shot, can't you? Well, that's a well. Thank you. Very much. Okay, so now we go to John Parrott. For Silvano, 14. Barry Hearn gives Silvano 13. And Steve Davis hold on, is hold lost. On, hold on, no, no, no. <laughs> 14 points, giving Silvano a total of 41 points, ladies and gentlemen. Now, please welcome back John Virgo. Oh dear. Right. Okay, the machine gun shot with 15 reds. <laughs> <laughs> so, so 41 uh, points for Silvino, shot. and that so makes I his total 51, puts him into second place, and again a good score. And that's really put the pressure on the players to come. Yeah, Out in the arena now is John Virgo. Because I'm so far behind. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just setting these balls up. As you see, I'm going to put 10 reds up in from the middle pocket. If I put 12, will I get extra points? Yeah. I'll put 12 reds up in from the middle pocket. <laughs> How about 14? <laughs> OK. <coughs> now, I've never done it with 12 before, so uh, <laughs> that's just Steve, Steve Davis winding me up because he knows I wouldn't have the two reds to put round the black. Thank you very much. <laughs> right. Now, with these trick shots, if you set them up correctly, you hit the cue ball correctly. <laughs> <laughs> And at the right pace, <laughs> you haven't got Eddie Charlton. <laughs> now, we've never met before, have we? <laughs> Quite simply, what I've got to do is to hit that red onto that one, that one internal, hit that one, ten reds open up, 
And while that's going on, the black will be going across the table, in between the ten reds, into the centre pocket. While that's going on, I'll be doing a few handstands <laughs> around the table. <laughs> Whistling waltz in Matilda. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to get a new waistcoat, you know. It's a joke. If he gets this one, he'll knock a few points up. This is difficult. Very, very difficult. Eddie Charlton right, had to go earlier. Oh, yeah. Pot the black in the centre pocket. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's back in contention after that. Now, because... I'm in desperate trouble here. <laughs> I'm going to play a shot which I don't think anyone's ever seen before, including me, and I've been practicing it for two days. <laughs> but you never know, I might get lucky. I didn't on the machine gun shot, but there you go. What I'm going to try and do is to pot the... He's not seen it either, you know. Is to pot the pink and black in the same shot. But I'm going to make it more difficult. I'm going to pot the black in that pocket and I'm going to pot the pink in this basket which I've threw under the table and can't reach. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a good sign, isn't it? So I'm going to try and pot the pink in the basket, jump over the basket and hit John Parrott <laughs> <coughs> now, if this works, I'll be amazed. <laughs> but you never know, do you? Pink in the basket, the white jumps over the basket and pots the black. Can I have a little bit of room, please? <laughs> Any drummers in the audience? <laughs> Pink in the basket. I've said that once, haven't I? <laughs> oh. 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 Right. Thank you very much. Well right. John, his name was taken in vain. He'll Still score hard marks nevertheless. What a great shot at a difficult one. 15 points. And Steve Davis is one of them. <laughs> 16 points. Very good score. 45 points to John Virgo. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome back the delightful Cliff Wilson. <laughs> well, you're the proper call to miss this afternoon. <laughs> As Charlton said, the secret of well, success. Well, that score from John Virgo, 45, has put him in with a definite chance here. He only scored three on the compulsories, but he's up to third with 48 and only really looks threatened by Colin Roscoe, although Mike Massey, we think, has a repertoire which may have to be seen to be believed. But Virgo currently in third place, currently in the arena, Cliff Wilson. Just give me a show <laughs> Throw some balls on the table, John, I've got to fall, Joe. <laughs> You're not John. <laughs> I'm surprised you can recognise anything, but... Uh, <laughs> uh... <laughs> Good day. I get paid for this? <laughs> you were. Am I? <laughs> <coughs> no, this is a special trick shot. I've never seen it done. <laughs> There's more balls than this. <laughs> there are no more balls available. Well, they've changed the rules, have they? <laughs> is that box empty? Hmm? It's empty. <laughs> Gee, I'm never going to get that. Right. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> no, I'm, I'm going. <laughs> Black, I'm only joking. <laughs> no, I can't do it. <laughs> Never mind, I'll try. <laughs> but he didn't do Have it. You he was trying to knock the black in off about uh, one, two, three, three, four, no, five cushions. Oh, I don't get trying well, to find the path move. through the reds. <laughs> you only get one shot, Cliff. <laughs> I don't think it'll count, though. You've got another one yet? Right, you have to do another now. Another one? Another one, yeah. That's the first one I got in 20 years, for Christ's sake. <laughs> <laughs> well, he had one go, that was his second. I wonder what the judge is going to say about that. Always the thought I get, I'll put it on up. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> That's two of us. <laughs> I, I got another one now. Yes, sure? please. Just one more, yeah. Will you pass me that black, please, Jeremy? Well, I haven't eaten it yet, but I will. <laughs> Don't drink that. <laughs> My Somebody wife already has. That. My wife bought that. The dragon. <laughs> <laughs> what for you laugh? Have you met that? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> You've got to set him up, Tidy. Whatever you do, set him up, Tidy. <laughs> <laughs> Missed. Ah, oh, that's near enough. Where's the white one, John? Where's the white? <coughs> God, there must be easier ways to make a living than the black. <laughs> I'm not telling you where, because I'm not sure. <laughs> what for you laugh? You really are my age. He's going to try to knock the Very black. There's a, a red, red in the way, but uh, he'll play a cannon off a red. <laughs> knock the red out of the way. That's the one to the right of the black. And uh, the black when, should when uh, be knocked in, in that, that pocket, the green, uh, where the green is. <laughs> He's very slow. <laughs> So, a cannon on the two reds, the left hand red onto the side cushion, onto the reds adjacent to the black, and meanwhile the red to the right of the black knocked out of the way. see the white Jesus. Stop it moving, John, please. Go in! Yeah! He's still got it. Well, you wonder how he okay, did it. The Here's the slow motion John shot. Parrick is there 15. you go. Barry Hung is 15, and Steve Davis gives. I'm just so slow. I never did like him. 14. <laughs> <laughs> that gives Cliff a total of 44. Wonderful entertainment. <coughs> now, for more entertainment, please welcome back Colin Roscoe. I've been drinking with Cliff as well. <laughs> <laughs> so that valiant effort there from Cliff Wilson won't be enough to put him into the like final six though. because he's already <laughs> trangling three of his Team B colleagues. There you see it. Terry Griffiths still leads with 57. Silvino Francisco 51 and John Virgo 48. So Cliff three points short of the required total. Now Colin Roscoe who led jointly after the compulsories he has a chance now to get himself into the final. Now sometimes you might find yourself in this position on the snooker table. Pot in the black off the left hand side cushion the white to jump over the intervening balls. And you snook it, and you want to pot the black. Yeah. Strong. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got to find a route here, Mark, to uh, get to the black. Yes, yeah, off the side cushion over the top of the reds is how we'll be trying to play it. This is a shot you play to get over the With top. the top on the ball. Oh! oh. Yeah. The next one, strike it too hard, look, up in the air, 
hit it too Hopefully, hard and the, uh, the white actually happens. stops in the middle of the table. So well played, Colin. She's going to drink it from there. <laughs> so this is going to be interesting, Mark, with Colin Roscoe having successfully completed his first of the two freestyle <laughs> shots. And if he gets this second one, it could give <laughs> some of the bigger names already leading Group B a bit of a problem. Terry Griffiths has 57. He doesn't really look threatened. But certainly Silvino and uh, John Burgo, currently lying second and third, in the glass. could be in trouble. This is the old Hopefully. ten pence in the glass trick. There's a ten penny piece just on the cushion in front of that glass. You'll know whether he gets it because you'll hear it. Oh! oh. probably saw the 10 piece just leap too, too high, actually, just over the top of the glass. A bit unfortunate. 10 there. We've got 12 from Barry Hearn, and Steve Davis immediately leaps in with... <laughs> I can't find me two. Four. <laughs> I've got, I can't find me two. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> 14 points, giving a total for Colin of 22 points. Well done, Colin. Please welcome back oh. Rex Williams. <laughs> Can we have the scores, please, Mr. Beadle? <laughs> um, well, when you started out, Rex, you did extremely well. Um, but I think you're going to do even better now. If I got one, I don't normally get that many. <laughs> However, here we go. So, Colin Roscoe, a bit unfortunate with that coin shot. And his total is 46, his combined total. He scored 36 on the freestyle. So, he overtakes Cliff Wilson. But again, it's not enough. And that means that Terry Griffiths is definitely through to the final. Now, will Rex Williams join him? Rex in what looks a hopeless position. He's only got one point, And he's going to have to score almost a maximum if he's going to go through. the idea is to knock the black from in between the reds. <laughs> off the cushion, <laughs> <laughs> across the table, <laughs> over the, <laughs> 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 the triangle and the wrist, <laughs> it's the cameraman. <laughs> 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 I haven't done so much fun since I was shot out of a cannon. <laughs> Here we go. Oh. Unlucky. Tried the shot that Alex Higgins attempted. Oh dear. Only just out. Are the referees having a good game? <laughs> <laughs> Right, now let's see if I can remember this one. Right, this is, uh, it takes a little time to set up, ladies and gentlemen, this one, but this shot was actually played in a game many years ago when undoubtedly the two greatest snooker players of all time were playing. Was I playing? <laughs> in, fact, in fact, well, of course, you know, without question, Willie Thorne was one of them. <laughs> and Willie turned to me. <laughs> oh, you were watching, were you? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Willie said, <laughs> Willie said, well, if you get this shot, Rex, he said, I'll give you the game. And I'll tell you what, Re Willie doesn't give much away these days. I haven't got much to give. Right, now you can see that the, uh, I'm on a red, <laughs> there's a red over the pocket, but I can't get at it, so I'm going to play off the red, which is next to the black, and try and pop the red, which is over near the corner pocket, but I must put it a little bit nearer, because it might not go in. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, please, go in, please. Huh? <laughs> 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 Hi, Anne. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh. Here we oh. <laughs> well, you can't... 
you can't even you can't even see the idea, can you? <laughs> well, Thank a wonderful you idea. <laughs> the amazing record. You meet the cannon, uh, the white John off the cushion, along the reds, and knock the red in with the white. <laughs> John Tees on ten. Barry Hearn gives five, and Steve Davis gives <laughs> zero. Oh, way room. One point from Steve. Very, very generous indeed, as always. Now that gives Rex Williams a grand total of 16. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome from the United States of America, from Tennessee, one of the truly great masters of trick shots, the amazing Mike Massey. <laughs> Don't let him get that water, okay? Okay, let's see. We've got six colors, right? This so is a Rex card. Williams uh, won't be troubling the final, and Mike Massey with seven needs to catch John Virgo, so he needs at least 41, and he needs more to cement his place in that final. Okay. This is hard because, see, I'm used to doing it with numbers on the ball. That's, you know, we... Yell is two, right? Okay, yeah. Two, left. Okay. Now, I have two decks of cards. And I'm going to spread one deck of cards out on the table. Could you help me just spread them all over the table anywhere? We'll make it a little faster. There we go. None of them touching. None of them, yeah. This shot is very difficult on a snooker table because in America we also have diamonds on the tables, you know, to figure our bank shots and stuff. And uh, how come y'all don't have diamonds on your tables over here? <laughs> it was hard to figure the angles, you know. It's, uh, okay, I have a deck of cards here. There's a card upside down in this deck, okay? Card upside down. I'm going to have someone to name one of the colors. And then I'm going to try to shoot into the balls and have the color land nearest the card that's upside down in the deck. Okay. Uh, would you pick pick someone? I'll let you pick someone from the audience. Okay. Sure. Could I ask the uh, the blonde lady in the back seat there? Would you please? What would you like? Sir? Which color? Just what color would you like? Just pick a color. The blue. The blue. I won't re-rack it either. Okay. Let's see. This section is here. here. Okay, would you hold your finger right here, please? <laughs> Just hold, yeah. That's where the center diamond is, really. It's, yeah. Okay, let me move the cards, yeah. No way. The blue. Okay, get the kiss there almost. Okay, it's rolling. Now, which card is it? I think it's the Queen of Spades. You think? Yes. Okay. Yes, Queen of Spades. Queen of Spades. So the Queen of Spades should be upside down, right? Watch my hands. Make sure there's no sleight of hand here. It's real slowly. Open the cards real slowly. Hmm, I know there's one upside down in there somewhere. Oh, wait, there's one right there. Yeah. Okay, just pull it out there. Just lay it out there. And turn it over and see what it is. Just show the card. I'll show it to this camera. Yeah, just show it. Yeah. What is it? It's the Queen of Spades. Queen of Spades. Okay. <laughs> well, isn't that the most amazing thing you've ever seen on a snooker table? And he must get maximum I, points for that, surely. I thought I missed the kiss there, but I must have got it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this next shot, here. What I'm gonna try to do on this next shot is pocket all of the colors, all of the colors. <laughs> if I miss this next shot, oh boy. This might be a short exhibition. Looks about right. Give myself a big ball here. That's a pretty good size ball, right? <laughs> you billiard players know what I'm talking about, right? A big ball. Okay. Yes. 
I've lost 20 pounds here just walking around the table. <laughs> <laughs> Our table is much smaller. You know? Francine wanted me to go on a diet, so I went on a diet. This one, this one, that looks right. Put this one here. Oops, wait, colors, I said colors. Yeah, okay. Okay. There we go. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Looks right, okay. The yellow here, the blue in the corner in the side, the brown, the pink, the green, the cue ball's gonna go three cushions and pocket the black. <laughs> Can you just repeat? You want to repeat? Like okay, uh, <laughs> you just listen the to the brown this. in the side, the blue, I mean the bright the, yeah, the brown. <laughs> I'm used to saying number, you know, okay. The two, four, five, three, six, and seven. There we go, okay. That's it. All of the colors to yeah. be potted in one stroke. Now to make this shot, whoops, more interesting. We've got to do this shot without spilling any Water. Okay. <laughs> Beaker full of water. He says he's not going to spill any water, and the black's behind that lot. <coughs> Trust me. Trust me. Watch it there. Don't, don't touch the water now. You've got to allow for the humidity here, too. <laughs> Well, he couldn't have anything more difficult. Missed a couple of the colors, got the black in, didn't spill the water. I've got a name. I've got Here's a name the slow for this, motion. this shot. I call it the disappearing Did he water spill any, <laughs> any of the water? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mike no. Massey. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what do you do? Gentlemen, you've got a, a problem there. I have got your hand. John Harris. <laughs> Uh, I have to give 19. Uh, uh, well, 19 points is the maximum of 20, 16 and 18, giving Mike Massey certainly the high score of the night. 43. Well, now we need to work out who's joining Alex, Dennis Taylor and Eddie Charlton in the final. So now, let's look at the score. Well, not surprisingly, Mike Massey has uh, shot up the leaderboard. He's down there as seven, of course, but in fact, he scored 53 points. So he is won it with a total of 60, 53 plus the seven. In second place and joining him in the final, Terry Griffiths with a total of 57. And in third place, Silvino Francisco, there you see it, with a total of 51. So Massey, Griffiths and Francisco will be competing with Taylor, Charlton and Griffiths and they are the six men who will be contesting the final and if it's anything like the shots we've seen so far it'll be well worth watching the world trick shot championship final then coming up right after this break so the original 14-man lineup has now been whittled down to just six and included in that six three world champions the top there dennis taylor champion in 85 Eddie Charlton from Australia, Alex Higgins, world champion in 72 and 82, Terry Griffiths, world champion in 79, and completing the six, Silvino Francisco, and the colourful and extrovert American, Mike Massey. Which will it be then? Let's go back to the arena and join Jeremy Beadle. And welcome back to the closing stages of the world's first World Trick Shot Championship. Well, we're now down to just six players. They're each going to play three freestyle shots so they're coming in with their very best. Remember, there's a first price of £3,000 at stake, so they're really going to go for it. Please welcome back our first competitor, Dennis Taylor. Well, there's not that many shots left, is there, really? You After said those it, Dennis. simple ones from Mike Massey, I'll just play a difficult one for you. <laughs> That's a cannon. There's a cannon there, that one. <laughs> Isn't he marvellous? Some of his, what do you see his next three shots? Right, this one here, you've seen this one on television before. I'll just show you this one. 
You've just potted the red, the whites come around the table, you snook it for the black. You'd probably play another colour. If you put plenty of chalk on the tip, nominate the black and you're quick enough. It's just a matter of getting down and popping the black. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, excuse me, Dennis. I'm just going very quickly. We're going to, after each shot, we are going to get to the scores. Wait a minute. Oh, no. oh, I, I would finished. like an explanation of that shot, please. Well, I'd like to see it was it. a bit quick. It was a bit it quick a bit for quick, the judges. Really. Oh, was I it? would like to see it played again. Well, point taken. <laughs> <laughs> well, we play it for everybody then. In fact, I'll slow it down for you and give you an action replay. This is for Jeremy because he missed it the last time. <laughs> action replay, all right? <laughs> You're going to do it in slow motion now as well. <laughs> <laughs> A wonderful piece of hustling there. Oh, so, dear John me. Parrott. The bare-faced chief. Uh, bare-faced. Oh, six across the board there. <laughs> out of a possible ten. <laughs> oh, that was all right. Shot number two. the reds, John. Just while we're getting these set up, a lovely little story I heard last week. <laughs> but a Welshman, a Scotsman and an Irishman. That just <coughs> makes a change, doesn't it? <laughs> and they're sitting at the bar talking. The fellow says to the Welshman, have you got any uh, children? Oh, he says, yeah, I've got a boy. He says, we call them David because he was born on St. David's Day. Oh, and the, uh, what, who was that? The Welshman, wasn't it? Mm. The Scotsman said, that's incredible, what a coincidence. I've got a son as well, we called him Andrew. Said he was born on St. Andrew's Day. And the Irish fellow said, well, that's bloody amazing coincidence. Do you know the same thing happened to our pancake? <laughs> <laughs> I nearly got that one wrong, didn't I? <laughs> oh, dear. This time we've got to pop the black. You snook it behind the 15 reds in the triangle. <laughs> got to get the white over the 15 reds, down the table, jump through the triangle, on down the table and pop the black. And if this one doesn't work, I'd cross your legs there in the front <laughs> row. <laughs> Could finish up with a cannon. <laughs> Right, here we go. Over the reds, through the triangle, find the table, pop the blank. Oh! Oh! oh. Hit the black too hard, but I think they'll award him that. OK, let's have a quick look at the score. Oh, six again. Six, six and four, which gives Dennis uh, a total of... Um, Sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> Three, six. Let's into action there, then. Nine. Right, under a bit of pressure now, so I'm going to attempt here. The machine gun shot's been played in various countries or throughout the world. Tony Knowles did it in Hong Kong with 11 reds, I think, when we were out there. I managed to do it with 11 reds on BBC television. So I'm only allowed one try, so I'm going to have a go at 12 reds. So if this works, it could finish up being an unofficial world record. If I get it, will you ring Norris McWhirter? McSquirter. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to have a go with 12 reds. One try, eh? <coughs> Can't see this working because my luck's definitely not in. I went into the hospital last week to have my tonsils out and some swine turned the trolley round. <laughs> 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 like the Irish fellow walked into a pub, he walked up to the fellow behind the bar, opened his hand, there's a big lump of dog muck there, and he says to the fellow, look at I nearly stood in. <laughs> <laughs> you hear about the Scotsman that owned the snooker club and died and left his son two snookers. <laughs> his name was Stephen Hendry. <laughs> What's the difference between Stephen Hendry and a coconut? Eh? You get a drink out of a coconut. <laughs> <laughs> right, one go at 12 reds. I'll just get the speed again, just to see what. I can get this, you know. I promise you. 
go get it. We can get it. Ultimate and trick shots. 12 and reds. Shots, Steve. It is extremely difficult. So to go for 12. Tremendous. <laughs> Great entertainment, Barry. Yes, I mean, uh, Dennis has got one thing going for him, and that is the fact that he's such a funny guy. Even if the shot doesn't work, you still walk out at the end of the evening with a smile on your face. Brilliant performer. John? Yeah, very difficult shot, that. I mean, I actually saw Steve Davis try that and play safe. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dennis, 52, ladies and gentlemen. Now, please welcome back Eddie Charlton. Yep. So, 52 points for Dennis Taylor, and we should tell you, of course, that the maximum possible in this uh, final is 90, with each judge 30 possible, 10 for each shot. So, 52 the target. The next player to try and beat that is Eddie Charlton. Well, it's got 53 on there. I'm not quite sure if that's right. We made it 52. 52, in fact, is correct. So we've... Uh, there we go. Before your very eyes. 52 for Dennis. Can Eddie Charlton better that? Hmm? <laughs> Hope you noticed the Riley cues as well. <laughs> Could I have eight reds out of the black bag, please? Eddie from Sylvina Water in Sydney, one of the most beautiful parts of the world. Jesus. 61 years of age. Oh, come on. Obviously, Mark, the position of those cues absolutely vital for this shot. <laughs> yes, I think he's going to go for the shot we saw earlier on, getting the reds around the cushions and into the corner pocket. If he doesn't play some right, they'll go over the pocket. I see it, but they I don't believe They might even it. come back. If they come back, of course, it upsets the rest of the balls. Well, this is one of those rapid-firing machine gun type shots, commonly known as the steeple-chasing <coughs> shot. And the idea is to line all eight reds up to the barrier. I have to send them rapidly racing around the angles. I want all eight reds to finish, to interweave between one another here in the centre of the table and eventually all eight reds to finish up in this corner pocket over here. Sounds good. See if I can make it work. Here we go. Come on, baby, up you go, up, 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 up. Oh, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Let's have a look while Eddie sets up for his next shot there. So, so motion replay uh, has to make sure they don't collide nine. these reds and have to be played at perfect seven, speed so they don't climb over the pocket six. lip or over uh, the pocket John, rail. You gave a very high score there. Very impressed. <laughs> yeah, simple as that. Very impressed. Uh, you weren't quite so impressed, Steve. <laughs> well, it's very difficult to talk about Eddie when he's actually setting up his next shot. But um, I just thought it might be more interesting. That's right. Um, it, it requires only timing. If you if being serious, and Eddie's a very good friend of mine, but I'm not giving him an extra three for that. Oh no, he's got to impress me more. Fair enough. Okay. Well, now you've heard the challenge set for you, Eddie. You've got to impress Steve more because that was just a matter of timing. <laughs> Well, this time I'm attempting the railroad five shot. The idea being to pop the red ball into the centre pocket for three and at the same time make a cannon onto the blue to complete the five shot. Here we go. Uh -huh. <laughs> Randy, let's go back. Lovely shot. John gives seven, Barry gives six, and Steve nine. <laughs> 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 
Very generous and very wise, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Your friendship is intact. Uh, John, talk us through that. Yeah, very good shot, very well played. Seven points. You enjoyed that, Barry? Good shot, predictable. But I always knew he was going to make it, but then he's a good player, no wonder. OK. Eddie? I'll give it a nine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try a billiard shot. I have to send the red ball up the table, catch up to the red ball with the white ball, and play in off the red into the corner pocket. It's a billiard shot. Here we go. Oh, oh. Unlucky. Good effort. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, Eddie Charlton. <laughs> John gives five, Barry gives three, and Steve gives three, which gives uh, a total of 11 and a grand total of 44 to Eddie Charlton. Okay. Nope. You got some more. Yes. And now, ladies and I'm sorry about the slight hiccup, it's just that the brain's gone. I'd now like to welcome back, please, one of the most popular people at the snooker table, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen, Alex Higgins. Well, you may have heard Jeremy Beadle say 44 there, but he forgot to add the third uh, shot, which was 11, and it made a grand total of 55, and that's good enough to put Eddie Charlton into the lead. And the next man to attempt to beat that score, the new target, is Alex Hurricane Higgins. It's okay. Well, lines, please. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. And he's got the beer glass <coughs> on the table, uh, the Mark. Well. That's <laughs> maybe for later. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Alex, of course, has uh, always been a very big draw on the exhibition circuit. I think we've seen 47-year-old uh, Colin Rosco drop the bomb. So what's he going to try and do? Knock a coin into Another the one that glass, <laughs> a much bigger glass I'm than worried. Colin Rosco's, and therefore <coughs> offers a smaller target. Now, Jeremy, the idea again is to try and get the coin into the glass. You'll know if it goes in, because you will hear it. <laughs> Not easy, this. <laughs> Clean that coin, can you? <laughs> I'm glad you did that. I'm not ready for that. <laughs> we'll play the yellow first. Eh? Doesn't fancy it at the moment, he's changing his mind. Handkerchief over the yellow. Mm, very good. Pop the yellow from under the handkerchief. <laughs> no, that's not the trick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've got to try and pop the yellow ball. The yellow from under the handkerchief into the pink pocket there. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at the. Uh, just before you play, please, Alex. We've got a six. <laughs> A five and a, well, a five. <laughs> that gives a total, <coughs> therefore, that shot of 16 points. Okay, this is the one. Fresh yourself. Get fresh. Now the coin into the glass. <laughs> this is a good one because it tingles. Makes me tingle as well. <laughs> Barry, I'll bet you uh, a tanner that it's a tail. If it goes in. You got it. <laughs> mm 
Oh, oh. unlucky. <laughs> Here is the next. Proving loser of the coin into the glass. Thanks, and I'll go now. I'm very disappointed. So let's have a quick look at the score there. Only if you've got one more. You've got one more shot, yes? Yes. <laughs> let's have a look at the score. We got four, three, and three. A, a very difficult shot to attempt, Steve. Well, it either goes in or it doesn't. <laughs> it's <either. laughs> I think it's pretty succinct. Barry? I couldn't follow him like that at all. <laughs> John? <laughs> so really, I mean, if you played that ten times, how many times would you expect the coin to go in? Why well, ask me? I haven't played the coin. <laughs> <laughs> I I've don't never know. seen a big glass. I've never seen. I've, I only drink of. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't do it anyway. No one's ever seen his money. <laughs> you won't be getting three for this shot. <laughs> <laughs> now the speeds of the essence here. Otherwise, take the glasses off. <laughs> now we've seen this uh, attempted a few times this evening. He's going to try and knock the black in once again into the corner pocket. Faster work, but it's a nice green colour. Mm. Okay, well, we'll try the, using. the pink in there. Very difficult shot. If he gets it, he should earn high marks. three from uh, Barry Hearn and three from Steve Davies, giving Alex a score of eight and giving him a total score of 36, ladies and gentlemen. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> Sorry? Let's have an action replay on that. Was in fact 34 points. A quick recap of the scores. We see that still in the lead uh, with 55 points is Eddie Charlton. Please now welcome back Terry Griffiths. So Eddie Charlton's lead is intact, not really threatened by Alex Higgins with 34 points. And uh, three men still to go, the next man in the arena, the 1979 world champion, Terry Griffiths. Getting all ready. Yeah, I got yeah, that's, yeah, okay. that's before you yes, start. Yes, thanks very much, thank you, thank you. Okay. Is it worth me talking? Can anybody understand my accent? Yes? No. No, I know. <laughs> How do you ever win the World Championship? Right? You were so lucky, you know, when you played against me. I can't believe it. Excuse me, sorry. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Oh, no, no, <laughs> I thought we picked oh, this one right up then. very well. <laughs> yeah, can we have a three for the yeah. coat? Yeah, three for the coat. <laughs> <laughs> Am I okay? I'm not disturbing you, am I? No, right. Right, another shot in the basket for number one. The best part about the trick shots is if you come on towards the late stages, you haven't got any left to play because all these players have pinched my trick shots, you know? <laughs> I invented all these trick shots because it's obvious I'm the oldest person here. Anyway, this one is a very difficult one. I'm going to try and jump the white ball over the reds and the colours and into the basket. You all right for that? <laughs> Here you go. Oh, wow! Wow! Terrific. Brilliant. Well done. John Parrott gives seven. Barry Hearn gives eight. And seven. And, <laughs> seven. and Steve ridiculous. Davis gives eight. A terrific eight. shot. Do you think, John? Well, he had to pop at me before he started, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Barry? Yeah, I think Terry's one of the few players who can still play the old basket shots, which of course... <laughs> because he's a bit of one of them himself. <laughs> As he says, he's the oldest one here, he can remember what it is, but uh, He great learns shot. off the inventor. He's... Yes, and uh, Steve? <laughs> yeah, he's right. One of the few reasons why uh, 
Uh, Terry does play the basket show. He's one of the few people with a basket. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> right, for sheer cheek, we're going to try and play the machine gun shot again. I've played it for the first time ever in my life tonight, so we're going to try it again. For those of you who haven't seen this before... <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh, 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 nice. So nobody has yet successfully completed the Johnny machine gun five, shot with seven five, balls. Five. One, two, <laughs> three, four. <laughs> Got in trouble at the fourth. They can't count. Eh? Can you count or what? <laughs> Is there um, a triangle I could borrow? Yes, here. Thanks, John. Top. There you go. Take my time. I want to get me cured this time, Jeremy. Sorry. <laughs> Blind so, Day is one of my favourite shows, I've got to be honest. It's like <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, two Love triangles it. on the table, <laughs> as well as the basket. You're on TV more than Barry Hearn, you know? I mean, that's <laughs> it takes some doing. Okay then, last shot. <coughs> I don't Trying think he's going to be ball. using the basket here, just the triangles. It's not good behind the reds, it's on the two triangles. Jump the white over the top, through the two triangles and pot the green. Oh! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. John Very gives seven. Barry gives seven. Steve gives six. Wonderful display. Ladies and gentlemen, Terry Griffith. Well done. Thank you, Terry. A grand total of 59 points and actually puts him in the lead, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as we go to our next competitor, our penultimate one, Silvano Francisco. Uh, Silvano. So, Tony Griffiths, with that uh, wonderful little repertoire, takes the lead with 59 points. That's four better than Eddie Charlton. And just two men to go, Silvino Francisco and Mike Massey. The new target to beat is 59. And let's see what Silvino can do. It's quite all right, Arthur. <laughs> It was the Sloan Street version I was trying to give. Pass. <laughs> King's Run. <laughs> now, what's Sylvia? Quite a little story behind the sh shot. Up. A couple of years ago, you got those time eaters and you put your 50p in and they give you 20 minutes, sort of thing and you've got to finish the frame in that time. And these two old gentlemen were having a frame, and the one fellow was 17 points behind. The only problem was he had three seconds left in which to pot all three balls. And this is what he did, I hope. <laughs> yes, very good, very good. Very original. A wonderful gag, a wonderful gag. Uh, John Seven, Barry Seven, and Steve Seven. Well done. Good scoring. <laughs> Excellent, Silvino. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? For you getting it right, I'll give you seven. Thank you. That puts him in with a chance then, Trevor. Yes, 59 the current total to beat, held by Terry Griffiths. <clears throat> and if he keeps up that rate of scoring, he will take the lead. There's a similar shot coming up, I think. Oh, Hot, uh, Thank you. blue, pink and black, I think, in three different right, pockets the idea here is in one stroke. Three balls into three different pockets in one shot. Well, white, pink and black, three different pockets, one stroke. Wants to move these balls out of the way at the top. 
They don't come into play. Remember, three different pockets. <laughs> the cue ball, of course, going into Savino's trouser pocket. A brave attempt, brave attempt. Good John scoring six, again. Barry six and Steve five. That was a difficult shot, John. So, Silvano Francescu performed a tremendous. <laughs> Tremendous performance. Barry? <laughs> it's a tough shot. Steve played it once and missed the pocket. <laughs> Steve? No, I missed the catch, actually. <laughs> so, with that 17, Francisco now with 38, mm -hmm. and he'll need to get right, 22 the to take the lead. Try and pot the red ball. That means that the white will overtake the red and pop the other red. Take six before, don't do it. Not too much. Good oh, job. Great shot. That'll score heavily. He may have done it. Well, right across the board, John gives seven, Barry gives seven, and Steve gives seven, 21, which gives Silvino Francisco a grand total of 59 points that puts him in fir joint first place with Terry Griffiths. So there's only one man now that can change the score and take them over. It's the amazing man from Tennessee. Ladies so, and gentlemen, Mike Massey. As you see there, Terry Griffiths and Silvino Francisco tying now. Very exciting. Both men with 59 points. And just one man to go, and this is the man that many were tipping as the probable winner before the start of this inaugural World Trick Shot Championship from America, Mike Massey. And, uh, I think I'll try, I want to try a legitimate shot, okay, a shot that could actually come up in the game. We're playing, I'm 35 points ahead, there's about four reds left on the table, and they end up something like this, you know, we're playing, and I'm... The black, I think, was here. This shot came up, was playing eight ball. Something like this. That looks about right. Okay, I'm 35 points ahead. So, if I could clear, you know, most of these reds here, of course, I'm going to protect my score, right? You know, that's what you want to try to do in snooker, get rid of the reds. So, what I'm going to try to do is pocket as many reds I hope four, as possible, the red in the side, this red here, and these two reds in the corner, and let's play position for the black at the same shot, okay? Well, don't ask me how he does this one. Where's the pink? <laughs> oh, there's one. <laughs> That'd be a foul stroke if you did it in the pink one, on the right? The, yeah. the color missing? <laughs> okay. Cross your fingers. Oh. 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 That, one. Oh. oh that was a great try. <laughs> I think you'll score fairly highly for that. I tell you what, an incredibly difficult shot to attempt, <laughs> and it's been reflected in the scores. The straight sevens across the board okay, from John, let's see. Here we'll Barry, do. and Steve. You all got me thinking now. Okay, another Goodness, legitimate only just shot. Fouled. We're playing. I know they've been doing a lot of jump shots. I didn't know they shot jump shots over here. I thought they originated in America. You know, we do it legally. You know, even directly over balls, you can do that. Let's see. We're playing. We've got the black here, red straight in. But let's put a couple of balls in the way here. We've got a couple of balls here. And let's put a couple over here. Make it a little difficult. Now if you if you notice, I can't you know, I can't play a safety here, and you know, I can bump this ball and everything, but so what I'm gonna try to jump this red over the green and the pink, and at the same time, I like the black ball, so I'm gonna have the cue ball to jump the yellow 
blue, and brown, and play position for the black. Distance down here. Be alert up there, Steve, in case the uh, yeah. red looks like evil to evil or something. If he got that, he's going to try and pot the red okay, in he knows the, the red corner won't go pocket. There, so. no, got that. With the first red oh, being okay. jumped the over the pink and the this, green. Uh, and still get position on the black. I don't believe it. Oh. Oh. Go ahead, Red. How about that? The best marks you've seen coming up, I'm sure. The main thing is don't dog the cheese, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at the scores there. We've got <coughs> seven, seven, and nine points for Steve Davis. Brilliant. So, Massey now with 44 points in total. He needs 16 from this final shot to be the champion. Chattanooga, yeah. Well, I Chattanooga. There's a place called Chattanooga, Tennessee. So let's do the Chattanooga choo-choo shot. Let's have a quick look at the scoreboard, as you see. Salvino, Francisco and Terry Griffiths really tying for first, but Massey now just 15 behind and with one shot to come, so that? if he gets 16 or more, the he's the champion. Oh, they had uh, smaller cues, right? It works. Okay. Let's make sure it works. This is what you call cheating on a trick shot. It's not really cheating, it's just making it a little bit easier. I might lose a point. Oh, stay right there. I'll tell you what, I might change my mind and shoot another shot, okay? <laughs> mm hmm. Okay. Right. <coughs> Sorry, folks, I'm going to shoot another shot. That ain't going to work. Well, he's allowed okay. to change his mind. Which Last he's done. shot. We're going to play the black ball in the corner pocket. I ought to get at least uh, 30 points for attempting this shot. <laughs> I had this in a dream. This, this shot came to me in a vision the other night. I was, you know, I was burying them in body and playing this thing, and I'm thankful, and uh, I never, you know, never did a lot of shots on, or any shots on a snooker table, so I jumped up out of bed the other night. This actually came to me in a vision. I hope it don't turn into a nightmare, but we're going <laughs> to... The dream. Another red. You ever tried to do this before? There you go, that's far enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to try that sometime. Okay. The black ball in the corner pocket. <laughs> what? <laughs> the black in the corner. I'm going to shoot the cue ball. The red is going to go into the red. The black takes off. The cue ball outruns the black, moves the two reds out of the way, and the black goes in the pocket. <laughs> The white knocks these out of the way? Yeah, the white knocks these two out. See, so it's got to overtake the black. <laughs> overtake the black. What you got to do, you got to hit over top of the cue ball. You got to get more more speed on the cue ball than you have on the uh, the object ball. Can you move, please, just a little bit? <sighs> okay. Oh, no. Uh, can well, I see that shot again? Y'all want to see that shot? Yeah. Okay, let, let's, let's see that shot. I'll tell you what, we'd love to that, see I, it. Can we just see it? I want, this shot actually went in the dream. I'm serious. It went first time. Oh. <laughs> well, it's such a phenomenal shot that he's trying. I don't think anybody's ever seen it before, so everybody's quite happy to let him have another go. But, of course, it's only the first attempt that will be scored upon. Oh, this ball's not freezing, freeze. Yeah, so that makes it uh, quite interesting, Mark, to see how they score that. Anybody got Maybe a hammer? 16. 
looking a bit further away. Well, he got very near to, to getting it, and uh, it was such a <laughs> yeah, difficult yeah, one. I think he probably would have scored enough, up. to be honest. Yeah. Never seen this shot play before. I don't suppose any of the panel have either, so he'll probably score enough. Yo! Oh, look at that! Yeah. Shot that I've ever seen right, done. We're going to score on the shot, so are you ready? Well, unfortunately, we have to score him on the first attempt, so it'll have to be a five, I'm afraid. A five, seven, a seven, and a three. And a three. Well, that gives. It was the first one, yeah? That was. We did. We actually, the rules are very strict. We did actually have to take the first shot that Mike attempted. Uh, which is only fair to the other players, which uh, actually means, ladies and gentlemen, that we have got a very, very interesting result. <laughs> because, ladies and gentlemen, if we are going to have a look at the scores, a three-way tie, we will see. Terry Griffiths, Silvino Francisco, and Mike Massey all have 59 points. Silvino and the rules Francisco. of the competition state that those three players must come back and perform one death. extra trick shot upon which will they will be marked the by the panel. So still any of the three could win. Griffiths, Francisco and Massey all tying on 59 points. Let's have another look though at that uh, second attempt by Massey. This wasn't scored of course, but uh, as Mark Wildman said, one of the greatest trick shots ever seen on a snooker table in this country. Unbelievable. Eight, red to nine. Back to Jeremy Beadle. If all players fail to make seven reds, we will go down to six reds until one player has potted the most number of reds. OK, ladies and gentlemen, let's bring back the man who first got 59 points, Terry Griffiths. Oh, Just to remind you, ladies and gentlemen, that they are all three of them playing for a first prize of three thousand pounds. So that there is a lot of stake, and as you've seen, they've been really playing for this infamous now machine gun shot, which in good times they can get, but under competition stress, well, anything can happen, as you've seen. So we now bring Terry Griffiths, who I've played for time, and he's come down from the bar. And <laughs> Celebrating runners up spot right. up there. Just to clarify, there's seven balls to knock in. It's the first one so, to get the seven. Everybody will have one gun shot. Gun. It's one machine gun shot. If they don't succeed, they'll come down to six and then down to five. <laughs> now then, Mark Griffiths, Francisco Massey, who do you fancy? Terry Griffiths. I fancy Terry Griffiths to win this. He's played it more times than anybody else. Quick pint on this one then, Trevor, my son. You've lost a lot of pints to me this week. How long did you have to set this up? Uh, what? I'll go for Francisco then, Mark. I don't want to make you nervous, but it's worth three thousand pounds. Thanks very much, Brilliant score. Well, now let's bring back a man who's got to try and beat six from South Africa, ladies and gentlemen, Silvino Francisco. So that's some target that Terry Griffiths has set his two opponents, every red in apart from one. So if Silvino wants to win this title outright, he's got to knock every ball in. And that's all. Uh, just uh, mark. while you're setting it up, Silvino, just yeah. to just clear refer it, yeah. to the judges, Barry. Well, let's make it quite clear that that was six points scored. But of course, you can't win. This is a, set, this is a seven red setup, and the only way you can win at seven reds is seven reds in the white ball. If all players fail to make the seven reds, the next round will be at six. Yeah. But you must put all the reds down the white ball to conclude this particular trick shot. Quite clear. That's clear. One ball prevented Terry from uh, achieving that. Six is no good, has to be seven. Oh, 
Oh. They're getting better. Well done, Silvino Francisco. So, Silvino couldn't manage it. For the one man... Terry Griffiths left one red up, and Silvino missed a couple, I think. But it doesn't matter, you've got to get them all in, otherwise all three must come back, and then we'll they the take one yeah. red away, so instead of the seven, there'll be six. So the individual score's not really important, um, unless all the balls are potted, then the players will come back, they'll take a red away, and they'll try again. So Mike Massey, if you can knock all these in, will be the World Trick Shot Champion. Okay, do you get the test the cue ball? You can test the cue ball. He can't be favourite for this because uh, I don't suppose he plays it on the pool table. But you never know, do you? Completely. Well, look at this. You heard what Barry Hearn said, the head judge said, that what... Oh, that's unbelievable. So unlucky. Just the one shot. red is all preventing the red Mike Massey from so going through. So what happens reduce. now, all three players having I'll not succeeded, one of the reds goes away, leaving six, and the three players come back, and again, they must the clear must all six down. reds to win <laughs> this title. So Terry, who cleared six last time, <laughs> Must fancy his chances of knocking these in. Just the cue ball left. <laughs> 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 Having good fun here. Yeah. <laughs> they suggested they might get down to one red in the end, and then the cue ball only. <laughs> And then what happens if two people succeed here, Mark? They go back to seven again. Yeah! Yeah! There's the six in. Now the pressure's on the others. Is that going to be sufficient? It's the first time we've seen it this evening. So now let's see if Silvino Francisco can Have plenty of time to spare. Silvino Francisco. Yes, in fact, he could probably have done a seven had it been there. But he didn't have to. Now Silvino knows he must knock all six in to prolong his interest in this competition. Amazing, Mike Massey. <coughs> How painful that must be for the South African. This man and this man alone stands between Terry Griffiths and the title of World Trick Shop Champion. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if the, the, the shot doesn't start until the colour ball is struck, that's right. Correct. Yes, just fouled by the one ball. Unlucky. Well, 
Winning first prize, but more importantly, winning the coveted title of the world's first world trick shot champion, ladies and gentlemen, Terry Griffiths. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, to present okay. Terry with that £3,000 cheque, can we have the Managing Director of Riley's, Bob Healy. <laughs> there it is. To the camera. Terry, any words? Well, yes, I'm a bit embarrassed, really. It's the first World Trick Shot competition we ever had, and Mike Massey is, is uh, like a thousand miles ahead of us all and I think just a little bit of pressure put him off tonight because he, he's just the most marvellous trick shot player I've ever seen in my life and anybody's ever likely to see it. but uh, it is nice to win the competition it is nice, nice to win a competition I've won for a long time <laughs> <laughs> as always as always ladies and gentlemen a very generous man Terry Griffiths acknowledging that Mike Massey is one of the world's greats and I hope that we're going to ask Mike to come back to prove just how good he really is but for now the day belongs to Terry Griffiths, very well earned. We'd like to thank our judges. We'd like to thank Steve Davis, Barry Hearn, John Parrott. We'd like to thank everybody here who put on the event. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much indeed, and good night. So there we are. Terry Griffiths is being crowned the World Trick Shot Champion. He needed a playoff against Silvino Francisco and Mike Massey. But he got there again with the machine gun shot. Six of them went in. And so it's Terry Griffiths, the Welshman, the man who was world champion in 79, now becomes the world trick shot champion in 1991. We hope you've enjoyed it. It's really been most entertaining stuff from all of us at Stoke. Good night.